The last few years in PC gaming hardware have been tremendous. We've had awesome GPUs, of course the Ryzen processors. So let's talk about what we're expecting in 2020. There's three big items that we're really looking forward to. So let's take a look now. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Thank you for joining me for another video. If you like my content, subscribe, smash that like button, leave a comment below. What are you most looking forward to this year? All right, so the last few years have been absolutely tremendous for PC gaming enthusiasts in the CPU space, the GPU space. We've had a lot of great additions. This year, there are three different things that we're really waiting for, and one of them is going to be CPU related, and the other two are going to be GPU related. So let's start with the GPU. The first one that we're really waiting for in 2020 is going to be from AMD. Now, this is going to be what they're calling Big Navi, or basically their competitor to something like the 2080 Ti. If you've noticed in the market, AMD really doesn't have a response to NVIDIA's high end graphics cards. Basically, their top end graphics card right now that's mainstream and still selling is the 5700 XT which is you know a little bit less than a 2070 Super so nowhere near a 2080 Ti. So Big Navi promises to bring comparable performance and that's going to be really exciting because most enthusiasts look at AMD Look at what they did with the you know, Intel CPUs and were able to bring performance up but the price down. That's definitely what people are looking for here. They want AMD to basically be competition for NVIDIA, bring the price down of GPUs and performance up so we get basically Ryzen-like GPUs in lieu of the really expensive NVIDIA GPUs that we've had recently. So that's why we're really looking forward. And recently, there's been some murmurs and sort of the rumor mills saying that Big Navi's pretty close to being released. So we'll see. We're still pretty early in the year, but I expect that sometime within the next few months, we're going to be getting more information on different cards and AMD's lineup because I think they really need to do battle against Nvidia. It's going to be better for consumers on the whole. And likewise, the second item that we're really excited for in 2020, once again, it's going to be GPUs. Now, Nvidia really has to respond to whatever AMD does. Now, you could say that Big Navi may beat the 2080 Ti, but what about the 3080 Ti? That's what Nvidia has up its sleeve coming up. Recently, the only thing they've released is that Cyberpunk, the 2077 special limited edition version of the 2080 Ti, which is more just a little marketing thing, so that's not really, you know, same performance as the 2080 Ti, but we're really looking forward to the 3000 series because before we talk about price and value proposition, Nvidia definitely usually brings the highest performing GPUs. So we want to see that 3080 Ti. We want to see amazing 4K performance, really high frames per second, you know, really great ray tracing performance and DLSS and all the newest technologies that Nvidia promised us in the 20 series. We want to see it come to fruition and be more mature in the 30 series GPU and the 3080, 3080 Ti as Nvidia recently has released their larger GPUs first, like they did with the 2080 Ti. And then eventually they get down to like the 2070, 2060, etc. So we're really looking forward to the 3080 Ti. Now, if AMD can release something that's better than the current 2080 Ti and it reduces that price, that's pretty good. I just don't foresee AMD being able to beat the 3080 Ti at the moment just because Nvidia is so far ahead in terms of performance. But look what happened with Intel. Once again, AMD, people thought that they would never catch up with Intel. They're too small a company. They would never have the market share. But really, within a few years, they were able to absolutely dominate Intel. And now most enthusiasts will buy a Ryzen CPU. So it's really incredible what turnaround has been done. So knows maybe in the gpu space nvidia releasing the 3080 ti maybe big navi is going to perform a lot better than the 2080 ti and while it may not beat the 3080 ti what if the price that it comes in at is so attractive that more people gravitate towards it now one big caveat here that we really want to watch with big navi 
Recently, AMD has had some sketchy drivers for their 5700 XT and their 5700 series graphics cards. A lot of people have been actually jumping ship from AMD. Maybe they got a Ryzen processor and they thought, let me make my system all AMD. But a lot of people are kind of regretting that and they're swinging back to NVIDIA because NVIDIA historically is just more reliable, less driver issues with different cards. This has been in the news lately, if you've seen it. AMD has had driver issues. It always has with the GPUs and recently it seems like it's kind of back at it again. So that's gonna be one huge problem. Even if Big Navi performs better than a 2080 Ti and it's priced better, if the drivers aren't optimized and if it's a mess, you know, it's going to leave a huge mark. So they really have to get their game together. They have to price it well, perform well, high end, like a 2080 Ti, and it's going to have to perform reliably and consistently, um, just like gamers expect from the likes of NVIDIA, because you know NVIDIA is going to be pretty consistent. If any of those three things are not true, their GPUs are just going to be lackluster, like they've been the last few years, and sort of just hang around in that lower and mid tier while never challenging NVIDIA which isn't great for us because then we're not getting that high-end competition to increase performance and lower prices. So let's hope AMD gets their act together. And this brings us to the third and final item we're really excited for in 2020. And no, it's not necessarily more Ryzen CPUs. I think we've gotten our fill of great Ryzen CPUs. Yes, the 4000 series is definitely coming. It's going to be amazing. But I'm actually really interested in seeing what Intel does. Because recently, anytime you think, all right, Intel has to respond, are they going to do something great? They do something really lackluster, you know, like the X299 CPUs that were just sort of rebrands and even the 9900KS, which was really, it's nice that it hits five gigahertz on all cores, but it's nothing really too new. And it's definitely not really putting up any competition against Ryzen, but Intel's 10 series CPUs, they're starting to pop up now in different benchmarks. It looks like we're gonna be getting a 10 core CPU. Now, if they price that pretty nicely, let's say if they price it at like four hundred something dollars up to four ninety nine. I think considering it's going to have a really nice boost clock, apparently it has like a thermal velocity boost up to 5.3 gigahertz or something like that. Considering it could have really great single core performance, I could still see people gravitating towards it. Like Intel's not completely out, but they're going to have to price their other processors really competitively in order to go up against Ryzen. And they're going to have to just be very consistent, perform very highly for the price. So I'm really interested in seeing what happens there because that's going to dictate AMD's next move. If Intel becomes complacent and their next generation of the 10th series processors aren't that great, AMD is going to be like, all right, so I guess we won. And they're going to relax a little bit, which means that AMD may start raising prices and not innovating as much because they don't have that pull. And we're going to be back in the same hole we were for years with Intel, just releasing slow iterations of their processors. So that's why I'm kind of excited to see how these 10th series processors are. I mean, Intel has disappointed us a lot recently, so I'm not you know, holding my breath and seeing if they're actually going to pull through with some amazing performance and price. I know they're going to have, you know, really good performance. These chips are pretty good. They have a very mature 14 nanometer process. So while it's not seven nanometers, it's still, you know, it's still pretty mature. So they're definitely going to have some pretty consistent chips. Um, pricing, they're never going to be the bottom of the barrel, but I just hope that they price it well enough to stay in the market and stay in the hearts of enthusiasts because they've really been losing to AMD. AMD and Ryzen, and that's all been very well deserved for AMD. So we'll see if Intel fires back with some competition, because overall that competition is just going to be great for us. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Smash that like button, leave a comment below, remember to subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video.